Hello everyone and welcome to the last stream of the year. It's very festive as you can see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have uh, even uh, acting like a role playing as a Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have our guest, yes. which is not Mark, but is instead no. Father Frost. Hello, Mr. Father. Father Frost. How are you doing? Ho, ho, bloody ho. Oh, uh, in a yeah, great mood. I'm fine. Um, <laughs> busy time of year for me. Um, I can imagine. Thank you very much for taking some time off of your very busy schedule. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't spend very long. Um, the uh, reindeer need mucking out, so uh, Muggins here has got to do it. So <laughs> otherwise it doesn't get done. So I'll only stay for a brief bit, and then I'll go and send Mark in to do the coding. Right, right. Do you know what Mark wanted to do today by any chance? Did he fill you in? Uh, he said he wanted to do a custom modifier uh, that uh -huh. you can apply to any view to make it snow. So, uh, yeah, we'll try and do that. Nice. Uh, I have never done one myself, uh, so I'm very curious how to do it. Because uh, if you remember, because I know you're an avid viewer of Code with Italians, Mark, some time ago, provided us with a custom uh, modifier to draw the, the slashed effects uh, on app icons. But this time we're going to do it a bit more interactively and we're going to go more into detail. Um, so why don't we do the even thing? So, okay, okay. Let, let's do the even thing. Let me, let me try to make it even a bit more can you see can you see the blinking okay so yeah. hello everybody and this is gonna be so noisy so bear with me um so i uh i i'm gonna do the usual um public service announcement uh, so we are gonna run oh this is so noisy we are gonna run giveaways uh as usual during the um, during the stream we are going to um, raffle uh, stickers, so you can, uh, you can type the, the word in the chat and you can get uh, our stickers. If you are a subscriber, you get also, you get also the holo one and, you know, the, the, base, the basic one with the angry pizza one, um, plus a bunch of other stickers that Sebastiano <laughs> provided us. Uh, All the stickers. Jet brains. <laughs> All the stickers. Um, from an uh, IntelliJ point of view, uh, I will advise in the chat to copy paste the word. So you don't, because we have an automatic bot that tracks uh, the um, when you when you type the the word. So uh, copy paste it. Don't risk to uh, get a typo in there. Uh, if you are interested in um, your our usual uh, IntelliJ uh, raffle. IntelliJ license raffle. Uh, we are also gonna run it. It's still running on one of our um, videos. So keep an eye on the chat. I'm gonna post again the the link while we go, and by the end of the the episode, we will um, we will uh, pick a winner. Uh, we can also. Uh, provide you with other links because we we can give you all the links that you want. One of the links that I can provide is the one that Mark used to become a subscriber, a supporter of our channel. Um, we have a, a coffee page where you can subscribe to our uh, stream and support us, and you get a lot of stuff back. Private chats. You get also uh, an Italian food package. Uh, if you subscribe for a few months, so it's just just give it a look. And uh, we are also running because uh, people ask. We are also running um, a discount code um, on our uh, shop, so you can buy the code with the Italian swag. There is a T-shirt, the mug, and other uh, interesting things. And I guess uh, well, and. Uh, Last but not least, if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you can become a Twitch subscriber for free. 
So give an eye, uh, give a give a shot to the link that I just posted. You will see how to connect your uh, Amazon Prime to your Amazon Gaming uh, and to your Twitch account, and then you can become a Twitch subscriber. Was it noisy enough, or should I? I I closer? adore this. You have to have it all year long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's already driving me crazy because uh, this is like. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. but right. okay. So this is this is this is great because I um, I want to understand more of modifiers because I'm seeing a lot of people doing the craziest shit with compose, and I find myself just writing lazy columns. So I want to see some hey. fancy stuff by the end of the year. Okay, well, that sounds like a perfect time for me to take my leave and I'll go and sort yes. out those bloody reindeer and I'll send Mark in to help with the coding. I'll be back in a, uh, I'll send him in in a moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frost. And uh, <laughs> see you soon. Oh, by the way, um, while we wait for Mark, I uh, want to thank uh, Hugo, not just for subscribing, which you should also do, uh, but also uh, because the amazing music you have heard in the pre-roll, if you're watching live on uh, Twitch, and also you will hear in the post-rolls when we're done, is done by Hugo, and it's amazing. Unfortunately, if you're watching this on YouTube uh, or on the VOD on uh, Twitch, we cannot really have it because it gets content matched and we don't really want to get kicked out of YouTube. <laughs> so we have the regular one there because it's royalty free. Uh, but uh, we have posted a link on Twitter several times with the link to Hugo's SoundCloud where you can go and listen to the actual fancy music. Oh, here's Mark. Look at him. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like... Did you bring... Uh... <laughs> Did you, Jesus? <laughs> Did you bring <laughs> Rudolph with you? <laughs> Absolutely, he was running a mock out there. Uh, uh, Santa's really got his hands full. Oh my god! I hope he didn't get uh, a ticket by parking the the sled uh, in the middle of the street. <laughs> it's on a roof, Sebastian. It's on a roof. You never know the these days. You never know. <laughs> there is plenty of solar. You can't actually park it yeah. there anymore. Like, um, can you imagine so, how much damage you do if you land with the sled on the solar panels? <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. That's that's not. Let's not do it. Um, so, where do we want to start? Uh, I think we should start by uh, saying hello, all. Um, Hi, Mark. Welcome. I, I, I haven't been Hi, here up until up until now, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but I, I think you you will uh, admire. The, the Christmas jumper, uh, if I uh, yep, can get nice. it in shot there. Um, yep. so, yes. Uh, you also have a, a lovely collection of Christmas hats, as we know. But <laughs> that's but one example. Uh, yes, there's one example here. There may be the occasional hat change as we go on, but let's uh, <laughs> see how we go. Um, okay, so shall we show the code? Show us the code. Yes. And code was then visible. So uh, we have slightly cheated for time reasons, which is we have created uh, an activity which has an image, which is, of course, in Mark's honor, feet. Um, feet. Yeah, couldn't be anything else but feet. Uh, and we are going to apply our custom modifier to this image purely for the reason that it is uh, simple. Like it's an easy thing that yes. we can test. But the plan for this is we're going to make a nice Easter eggy uh, modifier that then we can apply like a fucking maniac to the root composable of our <laughs> application. Nice. Because, Mark, what are we making? <laughs> we're going to make it snow on the feet. Um, yes. Make it snow. It be cold. <laughs> so, uh, a few years back, uh, we're talking um, uh, 2015. Uh, I published a blog post um, where we made it snow using traditional uh, views. Uh, so I will Just post. It, like in the 90s. Oh, sorry. Uh, I will. <laughs> let me see if I can uh, copy and 
paste a link into the uh, the chat. So yeah, there's a link to the original blog post in the chat where we basically took a, an Im image of me strangely wearing a silly hat. Um, and then we made it snow um, and we, we got some nice snow effects. So it occurred to me it might be nice to do the same thing, uh, but do it using compose uh which is um kind of uh, what code with the italians is all about so um nice. uh yeah we're gonna have a go at doing that today okay so we are what you're saying is that we are porting the snowfall to the next decade exactly yes nice uh okay so, uh, where do we start? I mean, we have an image and we said it's custom modifier, so I guess we need a modifier. Exactly. Um, so we'll start, we'll keep it very simple. Let's just try and draw a dot on the screen. Okay. Um, so we can add a modifier called draw with content. And um, what this does is gives you a, a draw scope uh, and within the draw scope, you can draw stuff. Nice. Yeah. So um, the thing is, you can control uh, when uh, you you draw around the content. So you can draw stuff behind it, or you can draw in front of it. So at some point in draw with content, you have to call draw content. Um, so within that lambda block, um, call draw content. So that. Well, basically, uh, what we have at the moment is is what's happening normally within uh, this image. So it will just draw the content, and so if you preview that, it you'll just see the feed. So if I comment this out, I won't see anything, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's just confused. Yeah, maybe the preview is confused. I don't know. It doesn't matter too much anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, but we can draw stuff on top of that. So the first thing we need to do is uh, create a paint object that we're going to draw with. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Ah, uh, so yeah, it's it's gone. So uh, the paint uh, is uh, we can create it uh, anywhere we like for yeah, now. We'll, we'll, we'll change this a bit as we go along. Um, so it's uh, a new paint object, um, which we can apply. Uh, so do we... So um, equals paint. Yeah, it's the compose graphics one. And now dot apply, and then we can configure it in the... So we'll say uh, is anti-alias equals true, just so we get nice, cool, nice edges. Okay, is anti-alias, which is false by default, right? Yeah. So okay. that will give us nice smooth edges. Uh, color equals. Capital C color dot white because snow is white. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, Andrew Studio. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, that took me that? by surprise. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, we want so the style to be. <laughs> uh, we want the style to be uh, painting style dot fill. Okay, because we want to put, to paint the fill of yep. whatever we draw, but not the stroke, right? Exactly. Okie doke. So now, in the uh, draw with content block. Yep. Uh, the uh, draw content scope, uh, from that, we should be able to get the canvas. OK. Uh, so draw context. Yeah. Dot canvas. Aha, uh -huh. got it. And so now we can just draw to that canvas. Um, so let, let's keep it simple to start with. Mm -hmm. um, and let's uh, draw a circle. Okay. So canvas dot draw circle, and this will have an offset of the center. So from the uh, 
draw I, i'm not sure whether it's from the content draw scope we can get the the size is it like canvas dot uh, uh i think it's got center there we, we actually want the center position i did see a center oh no that was just a parameter hint what is it no it's not oh yeah. it has center. so we're going to draw it in the center Swanky. Give it a, a, a <laughs> random radius now so give it 20 21. radius 20f is it oh it's uh, right uh it's not yeah it's, it's uh dips at this level and use the paint that we just created okay so try previewing that and we should get a white blob right in the middle of the the whoop, there we go nice oh, perfect. so we have a snowflake yeah but Pretty sure that if you look around, there's plenty, but that's another nowadays. But if that's place, go, move, go on, don't, don't mind. So, that that's the basic principle that we can use the draw with context, uh, draw with content, I should say. Um, and that will allow us to, to paint stuff on top of the feet, um, which is kind of the, the basis of, uh, of everything else we need to do so <laughs> keep it simple draw a circle um um uh -huh. so we're gonna need to think about creating more of them and we want to vary them so we want to uh really start thinking about creating a lot of snowflakes um so uh where are we? Uh, I just need to make sure I can find the code I'm referring to. Uh, so because we'll need it later, uh, let's create a snowflake state, which will contain sure. all of our snowflakes and their positions. And because it's a state, it means we can... Uh, trigger invalidation by changing mm -hmm. state and stuff like that because we will need to invalidate stuff when we want to uh, to move stuff um, mm -hmm. so our snowflake state uh, uh, we want a list of snowflake objects uh, in there essentially so that's just going to be a list of snowflake and we're going to want a snowflake class as well um, and that wants to be uh, an internal um it's going to do a little more than be a data class so we might not want it just to hold data uh -huh. it's going to have behavior as well right. it's going to each one's going to be responsible for uh, for drawing itself and stuff like that. So we kind of, uh, let's keep it a normal class rather than a mm -hmm. data class because it's got behavior as well. Uh, less confusing that way. Um, so initially, uh, each snowflake needs to know its own size. Is that a uh, float? Uh, it wants to be, yes, a float. And, and that can be a private val because val, we're not going to uh, want to access that externally. And we also want a position, which is going to be an offset. Uh, is this supposed to be a val or a bar? Uh, they're uh, all vals because they, these are, are going to... Uh, change as they move that you know this is immutable uh, an immutable object mm -hmm. um although we we could mm, uh i'm actually just getting slightly confused looking at my code <laughs> maybe <laughs> sorry it might be my fault <laughs> uh, that that what happens Ah, yep. it's because it's because uh, yeah, position doesn't actually want to be uh, a field. It just wants to be an arg, uh, uh, an arg on the constructor. Uh huh. 
so this is going to become mutable the size of the snowflakes not going to change but its position will um, and so we do need uh, a member var okay which this is what confused me in my sample code it's called position <laughs> um, and that is by mutable state of position which is the uh, constructor argument so that's the initial value the initial position but then uh, mm -hmm. the position can change uh, during the life of me got it got it got it got it, got it. so uh, what we now want to do uh, is let's move the paint into the snowflake class because we might want to uh, uh, have a, a slightly different paint for each snowflake later on so let's do that now and then we can adapt things later on this one is Gr supposed to be visible outside because it needs to be updated or do we want yep. to have a method to update it later on um yeah we can make it private yeah we're, we're gonna have an update so let's make it responsible for its own update um, got it and We'll come back to actually moving it in a short while, but let's firstly make it responsible for drawing itself. So let's mm -hmm. give it uh, a draw function, which will take a canvas. Okay. And that is going to call canvas. Well, I guess dot draw circle yeah it's basically going to do that but we're going to change those arguments yep but i don't need that there anymore okay yeah uh center wants to change to position yep and this is the size. radius wants to be size yeah fair enough okay so now we can just change our draw with context to uh create a snowflake and draw it and so we, we've basically just uh, done nothing else i mean we don't actually want to uh it, if we create a, a single snowflake there for now we can just prove it works uh remember mutable state of uh snow full state right yep uh I, sure uh okay and this starts with an empty list because we don't really know yet correct or no yeah. wait we start with one we said so yeah, let's, yeah of... let's just create a, a single snowflake for now snowflake and this said is like let, let's make it much bigger so we can tell it's a new one. Okay. Mm, make it red. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we have that yet, but we can at least do it the position perfect. like 100, yeah. 100 or something like that. Yeah. So create a new offset of 100 by 100. Yeah. Okay. That looks horrible. It's a very long line that is hard to parse, but it's fine for now. Yeah. We're going to fix that. Yeah. So now we have the canvas there. We can call snowflake state. And we probably want to add uh, a draw method to that. Uh, probably private. Yes. Draw onto canvas. OK. Well, we have a. Variable name, Sebastiano. Keep, keep an idea. Fluffy. Okay. But Hugo had Fluffy. also um, chosen the name of the modifier. So when we extract this, because I guess at some point we'll want to extract it to be able to reuse it, we have to call it Rudolph. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Seems legit. That has my approval. Okay. So let's call this Fluffy. 
fluffy state, sorry, but I, otherwise I will forget in 0.5 seconds. Oh, well. But uh, the, the, the contract that we have with the, the audience is that they can contribute to part of the, the name. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> maintainability. I'm still laughing about cannoli. What was it? Cannoli something that we had? Cannoli anyway. widget. Cannoli uh, widget. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so let, let's do a sanity check and see if we can preview that. I'm going to preview and see if the compiler makes a sanity check for me. I'm not doing JavaScript, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Hey, hi, Maya. Hi, Maya. And we have a dot. Okay, it works. Mm -hmm. It's a larger dot and it has a different position. So the mm -hmm. thing is working. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a larger dot. It's up there. It's not covering the feet, which is good. Um, okay. Respected. So shall we try and make this fall down? Um, or shall we make more we snowflakes? I'd say make more snowflakes okay. first, um, and okay. then we can uh, so we can get kind of like a, a static snowfall, and then we can start uh, animating it, which is where it uh, gets uh, fair enough. More so, complex, so let's uh, yeah. Uh, let's do it like this for now, and we can do a list of this shit. So the thing that we need to remember at this point is we need to know the canvas size to create our uh, snowflakes because we want them all to appear within the canvas. Mm -hmm. um, so actually uh, initializing them yeah. here isn't really a, uh, okay, a so option. Let's start with an empty list and then move this somewhere else. Yeah. Where do we do that? So what we can do um, is the we're going to need uh, some kind of state when we come to animate stuff. Um, and just doing that actually where we are with that, uh, where we're declaring uh, fluffy state, that's going to trigger a recomposition rather than just an invalidation mm. when that value changes. So we want to actually uh, get a little sneaky and try and limit the scope of where uh, we're going to invalidate stuff. So we kind of it's kind of the, the opposite of state hoisting. We want to push it down so that it's just going to trigger redraws rather than recompositions. Um, we want to, to limit the scope that's going to change. Um, there's a nice trick that we can use um, in that we can have a composed modifier. Mm -hmm. And let's start by creating uh, uh, a, a new custom modifier. You mean um, Rudolph? Yeah, that we can call Rudolph. Perfect. Perfect. That's the one. Money well spent, Hugo. Well, Italian points well spent. Um, so, yeah, that wants to, to take a state as an argument. So uh, that wants to take our fluffy state as an argument. Because it's going to be mm -hmm. have been initialized initially. Yep. And rather than having the the main that's it yeah we want to create a composed block there got it so basically this uh lambda is going to behave in the it's going to have similar to behavior to a composed uh function so we can uh have state in here we can trigger changes um and we can do all sorts of uh useful stuff um but we, you know, we have to take the same sort of care of only doing stuff in here that we would normally do in uh, a composable function. Um, so what we want to start doing is uh, in here. Uh, this is um, 
uh, sorry, we don't actually want that state as an argument. I am an idiot. Um, so, uh, oh, I don't yeah. say so. <laughs> so what we want to do is in here is we want to declare we want to move our fluffy state into ah, here got it so uh now uh the modifier uh, uh is stateful yeah that, so this this modifier is now where we need to think about adding our uh draw with content so we need to move the draw with content into here Okay. And then... And I guess I want to move Rudolf here instead. Exactly. Okay. Shall we run it and see how it goes? Yep. Let's make sure that we're still getting... Uh, so we probably won't get any snowflakes because yeah. we ju we've just got an empty list there now. Yeah. Um, so now what we need to consider is... How do we uh, work out what the canvas size is? Um, so the trick we can use here is before the draw with content, mm -hmm. we can uh, override uh, on size changed. So this will be called whenever, uh, so we'll get the, the new size, whenever the size of the composable changes. Uh, this will be triggered and it takes an argument uh yeah uh, we want to uh make sure we order things correctly mm -hmm. so yeah uh now we get a new size as the argument there and now we know the size of the canvas in here so we can actually uh start uh updating the um uh the number of snowflakes we have and the positions uh -huh. of them um so we can either put logic in here to do that or probably better to move that logic into our state so in here we want to call uh snowflake state equal uh, sorry fluffy state equals fluffy state dot resize and we'll create the resize method in a minute and pass that the new size. So what that will do is that's going to mutate fluffy state. And so it will trigger uh, recomposition within the, the modifier. And that will cause because uh, fluffy state uh, is um, referenced within the draw content. Uh, when fluffy state changes, it will trigger draw with content to be uh, uh, triggered once again. So in Snowflake state, or oh, sorry, fluffy state, I should say. Um, so the resize, again, what we want to do is we want to uh, create a, yeah, a copy and we'll create a companion object function to uh, create snowflakes and that will take the canvas size yeah and it's going to return a list of snowflakes and take the canvas size as the argument perfect okay so within here we need to uh decide how many snowflakes we want mm -hmm. all so, of the snowflakes all of them so <laughs> all of them uh let's just hard code this for now let's uh put uh, val snowflakes count equal to let's say 100 for now uh but we can change this as we go. Yeah, maybe we can have like a density based on the size of the stuff we're drawing. Exactly. Uh, but let, let's not complicate things too early. So that's we my want name. to return uh, a list of, uh, of size snowflakes count. And each of those is going to be initialized with a snowflake. 
and the position we want to be uh the size is going to be a random size and the position is going to be a random position so let, let's create a couple of helper uh functions uh at the top level that are going to help us with this so the first thing is a random position on a canvas so the the size is an in size so we want an extension uh function on uh actually on int size rather than uh, on canvas sorry you said canvas and i went for it yeah um so that's let's call that random position uh this is the int size yeah dot random position all ah, right yeah sorry you're correct and that will be equal to a new offset object uh and it's going to be width dot random dot to float. And height dot random dot to float. Okay. So what this is going to do. Why doesn't it like random? There we go. And now, of course, it doesn't like to float uh so yeah uh, an int random is gonna be uh thread local dot random thread local how much uh why that um uh sorry thread local random is just a, a neat way of getting random numbers that are thread safe um because uh random number generators can uh that if you give them the same seed, they will produce the same set of numbers. Um, this is kind of a way of, of just making things uh, thread safe. Um, mm. So that's going to do it on the local thread um, and should just make things behave better. Um, so I guess now in the position, we can use canvas size dot random position, right? Yep. Cool. So what that does is based on the the current canvas size it's just gonna gonna give us a position somewhere uh within the bounds of that canvas so mm -hmm. you know just a couple of extension functions and then they make uh, the code much easier to read so gotta love kotlin um so for the size what we want to do is uh we want a range of sizes so uh, again at the top level let, let's create a size range okay um, and it's going to be a uh, a val size range and let's say between 5 f is from 5f dot dot to 12f got it and now we can uh call because these are floats we want to create a uh, float dot random which is going to be almost identical to int dot random so if you yeah and just wants to be next float instead of but i guess uh this need times this instead because yeah. this gives from zero to one so yeah yeah perfect uh so now the size can just be size right size range dot random i think we need to make uh float range dot random then uh i oh, know it wants to be a closed range of float dot random sorry we, we are going to need float dot random um but yes, we need we need to create a closed range of float. Yeah, I I was just too lazy with the class names and everything, so it's like yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, this is float. Uh, yeah, you can just call it closed float. range. But uh, yeah, you can just do closed range uh, of generic type float, and that uh, should do what we need. No. You probably don't need the float. Uh, All right. Yeah, that, that makes no sense. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And this wants to be uh, 
uh, thread local random dot current dot next float uh, multiplied by uh, uh, brackets uh, end inclusive minus start plus, uh, plus start. start. So that's just going to give us a random number with it somewhere within that range, and hopefully now the size range random should be there. Yep. So, so if, we should have a lot of uh, snowflakes if we now run this. There we go. Yeah, that's so, festive and snowy and random. Yeah, and the feet are getting cold. <laughs> Do we also need a modifier uh, to turn them blue selectively? <laughs> nice. It's like a color filter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so why, now we have a bunch of snowflakes. Yep. Different sizes, different positions. This is already incredibly cool. The only thing I'm going to do, though, is I am going to move this to here because I think it would be like this way you can just customize it, right? Uh, if you want. Why not? Uh, and also, this stuff is only used in you're, here. You're so. missing uh, like a type or something. Uh, yeah, I'll do that now. And I'll move this one's down here because they're only used in here for now if need be we can move them around anyway sure. uh and this is a close range of load um all right surely enough this is uh this needs to because be because that's a companion yeah. object it's... yeah i just need to add this here Okay, and size and size range. It's nice that every time we refresh the preview by changing anything, the snowflakes move. It's a free animation. <laughs> Only works in the IDE, unfortunately. <laughs> and they say that it's 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 easy with compose to animate things. Yeah, and, you know, that's uh, next next level. It's even so too easy. Uh, but to, to summarize what we've got here is the, these random snowflake positions will be created if the view size changes, or sorry, if the composable size changes. Um, but now, because uh, they're stored within a state, uh, we can uh, try and move them. Um, so what do you want to do next, Seb? Do you, shall we uh, try and... Uh, make the density of these uh, a factor of the the total canvas size. Sure, that should take animation. a second anyway. Yeah. Um, so what we need to do uh, is we need to determine the uh, uh, within the, the, the canvas area, we want a, a rough density and mm. we then want to work out what the count should be to give that sort of uh, distribution density within the, uh, uh, within the canvas. So uh, snowflake count, uh, where are we? Um, We want the canvas. It, it wants to be um, a function of the canvas area times the, the normalized density. It's too bad there isn't a companion thing for int uh, size. Yeah, the area is just going to be the width by the height. Yeah, but I am going to make that, that. or uh, maybe even just a companion val. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no, it's going to be an int, uh, and this is get uh, with times height, and we want to um, probably yeah yeah that's fine that's that is already going to be an int isn't it so uh, well so yeah this needs to be rounded then yeah because density is not two 
Yeah. Yeah. You can't have half a snowflake, even though something may be partially off the screen. Yeah. You you don't want half a snowflake. You would still have a whole snowflake, even if it's not fully rendered on the screen. It's yep. Sorry, but I'm a bit of um stickler for this. Uh, does this uh, no, it needs to be no? What? Oh, oh. Uh, turns out it's not very inclusive. This needs to be this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oops. But it's weird it doesn't take float, but I guess it's because it's more adaptable like that. Yeah, I don't honestly remember. Anyway, this is fine. Uh, now we have a float range. We might even want to do um, just a check here. Require uh, density in 0f to 1f. And then uh, just like density must be between zero F and one F inclusive. Okay, perfect. Get you doing domain modeling live on Twitch. Damn. <laughs> very proud. I'm very proud of you. Thank you, Ivan. I know you'd appreciate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, we have the density. Let's uh, so let's see what's broken. Oh yeah, this one's obviously the density. We have the density. Yes, I don't know why I was not sure about <laughs> using that, but whatever. Uh, so I think the number of snowflakes is going to change. Uh, I think it changed to a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it changed to one very big snowflake or very very many. I think, I, I think everything is a snowflake <laughs> because the snowflakes yeah. are all like from five to twelve pixels in diameter, and mm. we are doing one every ten pixels. Yeah, so I think yeah. we want to divide the the density by I don't know five hundred maybe. Yeah, let's try. Uh, if this works, we can create a constant uh, for that. Does that need to be 500f? Uh, is uh, that going to produce an int value otherwise? I don't think it makes much difference considering. But uh, if like this is an int, but this is a float, uh, ah, so yeah, float so. divided by int is well, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. But let's see if 500 is enough. Yes, it is. Look at that. Yeah, look at okay, that. let's create a constant then. So let's say this 500 is uh, com wait, oh, uh, uh, density uh, divider. I don't know, something like that. Yes, it's a const. Perfect. Great. Okay. Good, good, good. So we have the density uh, responsiveness. Is it? Does this make our snowfall responsive? I guess it does. Yes, I believe <laughs> so. The, so. Are, are, are you saying that it's gonna work also on tablet? Yes. On foldables. Yes. The only thing I think is gonna break this right now is if you animate the size of the composable, because the snowflakes will be like. Because every yeah, time every... you change the size, that does stuff. But yeah, absolutely. So the size change triggers all the snowflakes to be recreated in new random positions. So you would just get snow uh, like a, a static on a TV screen. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. So... so let's move things. Yes. Mark, how do we move things? Um, Right. Um, so to move stuff, um, basically what we need to do is we need to uh, uh, wait for each animation frame. 
Aha. And okay. we can do that. And uh, if we go back to our custom modifier, um, Rudolph, where we are doing Call it all of Rudolph. this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice the, name, Hugo. The thing has a name. The yeah. thing has a name, Mark. Come on. <laughs> okay. So, now the, so the what do we do in Rudolph? Ivan doesn't understand anything. Starts right. Rudolph animations. Ah, it's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, so what we effectively need to do is for every um, uh, time a frame is drawn, we want to move the uh, uh, the snowflakes a little bit. So we want to create a launched effect that's just going to do stuff. Um, uh, outside the scope of the composable. Um, so the first thing we want to do is while is active. So we don't, this is a coroutine scope. So we want to stop doing stuff once the coroutine uh, scope deactivates. Mm -hmm. uh, and within that, we want to call with frame nanos. And what this is going to do, uh, it takes a, a, a value of the frame time in nanos. So uh, we can call this what, whatever we like. Um, new tick, maybe. You read my mind. And what this will do uh, is this is going to kind of wait for the next uh, drawing frame. And we can then update stuff. And new tick will give us the amount of elapsed time. Mm -hmm. uh, since the last frame so we can start coding stuff to be a little independent of the actual frame rate and we can move stuff proportionately dependent on how long each frame is taking to draw so even if we got really inefficient in here and started dropping animation frames we would cope with that and we'd at least keep constant speed but we'll try not to do that um <laughs> But it means we start if, with the best intentions. <laughs> it, it meant even if the user changed, uh, uh, you know, on the the uh, Pixel Six, you can change the the frame rate from uh, 120 uh, frames per second to 60. Um, if the user was to do that, they would see no discernible change in the speed that the snow was falling. It would just be uh, not quite as smooth at 60 uh, FPS. So. This is where we can uh, update the position of all our snowflakes. And so we need to uh, also, we, we don't, we, uh, okay, let, let, let's start just by moving them all uh, a, a similar amount and just get the, the basic principle So we just working. move them, move down, like. Yeah, just get everyone to move down a pixel initially. Okay. Um, so let's do that by uh, inside here. We call uh, for snowflake in snowflakes. Yeah. Uh, snowflake. And let, let's just call update on it. And Which we don't have yet, right? Yeah, which we don't have yet. Let's create that. And what do we need to pass? Uh, for now, nothing, but we, we will do stuff shortly when we come to, to do things sure. for real. And in here, what we want to do is actually yep. change uh, position to equal an offset of uh, position.x and position.y plus 1. Okay. So that should update the position. So if we try running that, this may not display in the preview. Uh, yeah, probably not. But we can run it. Run it Wait, where is the button to run the preview on the emulator? There you go. I think so it's going to be faster. In the meantime faster. that this thing runs... It's happened like a couple of times already. A couple of times already. You don't use for each, but you use the live template to create the for yes uh, for iterator. Why? Uh, according to the Kotlin style guide, you use for each in a functional chain, and you use for 
outside of a functional chain. That's why. Thank you, Sebastian. No worries. Look, it's falling literally oh, outside works. of the screen. Bye, Snow. <laughs> Ciao, Snow. <laughs> so, so, so that, we that just shows that the basic principle: uh -huh. you can move stuff around. Obviously, it it all looks as though it's moving as one. So we we want to yeah. change that, and we also need to. Uh, uh, do something when a snowflake disappears off the screen. I was um, thinking, if the if we let it run for long enough, does it crash or does it wrap around? <laughs> <laughs> Probably it would wrap around, I guess. Yeah. So we don't need to do anything else. It's done. <laughs> you just need to wait. You just yeah. need to wait. But now we have a we have a modifier that actually simulate the end of a snow fold, basically. Yes. And, you know, there's no more snow. It's like you know, it's the, just suddenly the end. that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. It's over. Yep. Enjoy global warming, as Adam is pointing out. Yep. <laughs> so so I, I guess here we need to give like have a maximum amount well what we actually want to do uh, mm -hmm. is when the snowflake uh, disappears off the bottom of the screen let's recycle it and move it back to the top um, yeah, right so what we can do is rather but, than set but, the... but I would suggest also uh, uh, offset on X otherwise it's going to look a bit like space invaders kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah, when we recycle we can also. when we recycle we can change the act, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, because in fact we don't need to because what we're gonna do um when when we uh get this we're gonna have the, the snowflakes currently they're all moving together. Mm -hmm. We're we're gonna change yeah. that to make them look a little more natural anyway. Um and you won't notice the the X uh, thing at all because there's so much going on I, I promise you you won't notice it so we don't need to worry about that fine but only because it's you saying that mark <laughs> um trusting so, trusting mark here yeah so what we need to do here is if uh uh the position uh is greater than position dot y is greater than uh, the canvas height, uh, so size, uh, it's not canvas size, it's just size, I believe. Uh, no, because oh, no, that's size. the snowflake size. I think yeah, we need we to have, pass that. Yeah, we need to pass the canvas size in as an argument to snowflake. I mean, we can also the pass canvas it to size update. isn't going to change, so I think we can just pass it in when it, it's created. Uh, yeah, we don't have it here, so... You're right. I'm a, As Maya always. Maya is suggesting recycle with a new random number. Uh, private val. Uh, recycle what random number? For what? Sorry. We actually want to move it off the top of the the yeah. display when we recycle. Because if you just got a snowflake appear right in the middle of display, uh, in, in the middle of the, uh, the canvas, it's going to look weird. So Warm we, could, we could uh, give it a, 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 a random X position. But um, I mean, as I say, I think there's so much going on on the display. You really don't need to bother. You can just save yourself yeah, a calculation, uh, a random yeah. number. I mean, if you uh, wanted to do it, but, it, it but, would be trivial because you would do X equals uh Canvas size dot with uh, dot random dot random. Well, we don't have it here in scope. We would have to move it outside. Yeah, yeah. One more reason not to do it for now. I mean, we can do it later if we see we need it. Uh, I would say let let's stick it with the uh, just moving it right outside of the of the bounds that we're drawing. Uh, we want to make it minus size minus. Uh, uh, it's not just size; it's the canvas size as well. Oh no! Uh, yeah, sorry. No, you, we're we're moving it to an absolute position. Yeah, minus yeah, yeah. Size, aren't we? Yeah, size is the the snowflake size. Yeah, 
that's the effectively the diameter of the snowflake. Yeah, exactly. Or, uh, the radius of the snowflake. So, yeah, sh should we try that, see if that works? Yep. Uh, yeah, that's the radius, not the... Um... Sorry, I just I was just gonna do this so it's easier, and I'm probably gonna rename this to radius. Yeah. So it's a bit... so maybe it needs to be radius times two. Because uh... the diameter is uh, the. I think it's fine. I mean, we only changed the I know, name. It's, radius it's is fine because it's the center plus the radius, isn't it? Is what's going to be visible. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, you meant here, right? Yeah. I mean, we can yeah. also do this but it, it doesn't matter because as you said like that's the center of the circle yeah. we're drawing so it's going to be outside okay so right. what's broken uh this is now that was very scottish um that's now okay. radius and yeah, we, we need to pass in the canvas size yes which we have, we have it there there you there, go there, there. perfect so, should we see if we're now recycling our snowflakes? Yes. I just realized I have hit the wrong uh, thing, and it's just Control-Shift-C, because I want to see what's going on, I guess. I mean, that's my assumption. Um, come on. The annoying thing about these shortcuts here is that I don't know why, but they've defined them in a weird way. They don't register as actions to the ID, so you don't get a tooltip here from Presentation Assistant saying... Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. a problem. I mean, it's a though. bit uncanny. They're disappearing. Like, I think this is wrong, because this should be plus radius. Yeah. Or actually minus radius, because we need the top. Why is that? Maybe I don't get it over. Because it's the... a circle, and that's the like the Y is the center, and you want to make sure that the uh, top is off. So you need to subtract the the radius, so you get to the top uh, of the yeah snowflake. You want to make sure I don't get it the whole the, of the, the stream, snowflake, so... the whole of the snowflake has uh, fallen off the bottom of the frame before we move it back to the top. Uh, Can you see them disappear I, I see, midway I, yeah, through? Yeah, I see. The, the, yeah. Moment, the moment they touch, they Yeah, the, they when the center touches the, mm -mm -mm. Uh, the thing. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, perfect, perfect. So the next thing to do, uh, I I think, is to add some entropy to how the, the snowflakes fall. Yes. Yeah, that, um, that's, I mean, I, I like the effect, but it's a bit uncanny. It, it's a bit everything's moving together. We want them to kind yeah. of, you know, snowflakes don't fall like that. Okay, they're random sizes, but they're all just kind of uh, falling together. So what would be good is... Uh, firstly, to have them fall at different speeds, because well, we, then you would get a feeling for depth. Um, we also have another thing that we haven't done yet, which is our, like we done the thing with the um, uh, with frame nanos, but we're not using that value. So we need to uh, do yeah. that too. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's do that first. That, that makes an uh, awful lot of sense. Yeah. Um, where the fuck was it? Rudolph. Oh, there he is. Okay. Yeah, so it's in our launched effect. <laughs> did, you, did, um, you, did you just call the modifier like yes. you call a dog? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's a reindeer dog. Sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has four legs. That's what yeah. counts. Um, okay. They work the same, I think. Okay, so uh, we have the new tick. I think we need to calculate how much time has been since the last frame, right? Yeah. Okay, so so what are we doing here? Because I just got because I'm constantly looking away for notes. So, so what we're doing here is we're going to update um, things to move a certain amount depending on how long uh, the um, uh, the frame is taking to draw. So that will depend on the frame rate of different devices. So if it's running at uh, 120 frames per second. Currently, the snow would fall f twice as quick as uh, 
if we viewed it as 60 frames per second. So what we want to do is we want to uh, uh, have the, the speed that they're falling as a function of how long each frame is taking to render. Um, and that way, it will always fall at a constant speed, irrespective of the um, uh, the frame rate. So that's the first thing we will do so here. You are you are up you are optimizing the speed on the refresh rate of the display. We're not optimizing it. We are untying the the speed from because right now we we are just saying every frame you add ten. Uh, to the Y position. But the problem is you okay. might be targeting 60 frames per second, but for whatever reason, it might drop a frame, two frames, three frames. The next time you get a frame, you want you will calculate how much time has passed since the previous time you drew something. So if you drop three frames, then you're going to skip. Like you're going to draw three times 10, not 10 as if nothing happened but also that's important because as mark was saying earlier if you are for whatever reason running at a different frame rate adding 10 to the y position every 16 millisecond is different than adding 10 every 8 milliseconds so if you're running at 120 uh, hertz so 120 fps you will get snow that falls double the speed but yeah, we don't very, want that. We want to have the same feed, the same speed everywhere. So what you do to untie from the frame rate is you calculate how much time has passed between the current frame and the previous one, and that you multiply that for for to by the amount that you would want to move it by one logical frame. So assuming your base speed is 60 FPS, you say, oh, in a world where this is 60 FPS, I want this to move by 10. But if for any reason the frame rate is 120, then you're going to have half the, the elapsed time. So you multiply the, the duration by half the amount of milliseconds, and then it moves by less in like by half in half the time. So the speed is constant regardless of the frame rate. I don't know if that was clear. <laughs> Yeah, well, there was some fancy shit there, but wow. Okay. I mean, I, I appreciate that you you care about this stuff. Some video games still fail doing that, so, but we're better than that. <laughs> better than video games. Yeah, some frames tie animations to frame rate, which is generally bad, uh, because you never know. Okay, so the way we do that is we calculate. Well, I've changed with frame nanos to with frame millis because yeah. it's just more convenient and i calculate the difference and i have a new state where i store the previous value and i save the the value there uh ba -ba 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 -ba. okay so one last thing to do i think is probably going to be important the first frame we don't like we have a minus one value, so we don't really have uh, an, a difference to animate by. So we probably don't want to do this in yeah, that we, case, we, unless we know how long it elapsed. We yeah, don't want to uh, update anything mm. because the next frame will get an update. The user's not going to uh, notice yeah. one missing frame initially. Uh, this is simply elastic um, less than zero. And if was first frame, we return. Well, we just continue. Uh, no, return. Sorry. Return. Yes. So we skip this part. Okay. And we need to let now we have added that. We need to add this parameter to the function. So, yep. Function. Here it goes. Perfect. Okay. So we have this, and now instead of doing plus one, we want to add the uh, delta y, which we need to calculate. And this is going to be a function of elapsed millis times the theoretical speed 
Uh, so let's call it base speed at 60 FPS. So we're doing our calculation, assuming everything is running at 60 frames per second. Uh, and by doing that, we can, uh, we can divide it, but we also need to scale the actual duration by, uh, frame duration at 60 FPS. So this one is fairly easy because it's 16 milliseconds. Uh, so, well, I'll, I'll create it here and then move it. And then this one we also need to create. And let's say, uh, well, this is one. It's maybe a bit too slow, uh, but that's fine. Uh, let's say, I don't know, maybe two, something like that. What do you think, Mark? Yep. Uh, sounds good. Let's do two. We have a we have a question in the chat. Uh, can you do it as a recommended base FPS, or do you need to read the screen refresh rate from the device? Uh, no, we are just like the point is even if you read the screen refresh rate from the device somehow, which you probably still would do with the frame millis thing or with the frame nanos probably. Um, then you still need to um, to have a base reference value because you need to decide my reference frame per second is 60 and then you increase or decrease depending if the frame rate is slower or faster. Because obviously if the frame rate is faster, the frames are faster, so you want to decrease the speed, the relative speed, so that the final speed is constant. And this will also give you more consistent results if uh, in the event of drop frames, because although uh, there will be a slight stutter, when it does update, it's going to move down the correct amount as well for a, a miss frame, because we're basing it off when the last frame was drawn. That's all we care about. Uh, so if the frame weight was to change for any reason, we will adapt to that changing frame rate and the, the, the rate of descent will be constant. Yes. Okay, so I think that should be fine. I'm going to try and run it. Um, the What I expect is the speed uh, at which they were moving will be different, probably. Uh, if anything, because of this, but let's see. Yeah, it's twice as fast. That makes sense. So we have our delta y, which is fine. And uh, now we have made our animation frame rate independent. Uh, Mark, you were saying something about uh, entropy. Yeah, uh, so that there's a, a few things that we can, uh, we can vary um, to uh, actually make each snowflake behave independently. Um, so if you think of where you see snow falling, um, the snowflakes closer to you move faster than those further away. That's depth perception. Um, but also as snow falls, you get local wind eddies that will move them. And so that they don't all just fall vertically. They kind of swirl around with the wind and stuff like that. So we can add those kinds of entropies to this to give it a more natural effect. So are we adding um, a fluid simulation to simulate the air movement or? No. <laughs> uh, we, we, we... A, real, a real engine. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, in the next episode, the ray tracing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can have Roman and I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. The filament. You would, yeah, I would love to. <laughs> Jeez, let's get it quickly. <laughs> so, uh, okay, let's start with um, just introducing uh, some uh, depth perception. So what we want to do is alter the rate that uh, different snowflakes are going to fall. Right. Um, so let's give each snowflake uh, an additional uh, uh, constructor argument called increment factor, which is going to be a float. Uh, 
And where we calculate the delta y, right? Let's just uh, have increment factor multiplied by that. So m little changes in the increment factor will mean that different snowflakes are going to fall at different rates. So here, when we create them, yeah, what we, we want to, to do is we first let let's create a range. Um, mm -hmm. of increments as we did before so where, where we've done these uh, ranges let, let's say between 0.4 and 0.8 I'm going to do it like this because otherwise it looks ugly let's give it a little bit of variation and then on the increment factor we can just create a uh, uh, the uh, increment factor range. There is a, I there need is to a add suggestion it. by Maya in the chat. Um, you can. Uh, yeah, we could certainly do something like that. But in the testing I've done, um, it kind of works equally well because you can have um, bigger and smaller snowflakes close to you. It kind of gives it more random feel. To, to just have it completely uh, independent. Um, so it, it still uh, gives it a, a, a nice feel by doing that. So let's run it. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, we can still tweak it if it doesn't look good. Yeah. I just uh, want to see how it little... looks. Uh, uh, uh... Killed it. Killed. That's the official song of Killing Gradle Demons because they're keeping a oh. preference to files. That must be a record. We're an hour and 20 minutes into the stream and it's the first time you've had to kill Gradle Demons. I'm definitely in recent times that is a record. Yeah. Tends to happen much more often. I also just realized that my What's sweater that? is pretty uh. much dead. Like the LEDs are barely, barely, barely managing to do like a small twinkle, but it's mostly dead. Damn. Can I change the batteries on this thing? Plug it to the socket. Like Does it have a USB plug? Whoa. <laughs> it's uh, like a USB. Yeah. Next time, Raspberry Pi with a bit of soldering. I mean, I mean, this is primer quality, so I'm sure that there is a way to change the battery. Nice. Oh, again? What? Okay. The process. So, <sighs> stop all, close. I am going to delete the configuration there. I'm actually going to choose this one and see if this works. Just run, like, start the activity proper. I don't think it's going to make much difference, but we can try. Uh... Yes, it works. You will notice that there is some weird stuff with the uh, snowflakes appearing just outside. Uh, I think it's because we forgot to... Um... <sighs> Uh, that's clip. an easy fix. Yeah, we can just apply a clip there. So uh, back in our composed modifier. Uh, Rudolph! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, clip to bounds there and rerun it. And that should uh, do some... Uh, clipping. Do they, do they move differently? Because probably I can perceive it from the... From Skype. What do you mean by differently? As in different speeds? A speed. different speed? You should yeah. see them moving at different speeds. I don't know. It feels like a, like a, a wall of snowflakes. Maybe, maybe it's just the stream. Yeah, find two close together, and you should see them moving at slightly different rates. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yes, thank you for the suggestion. Uh, but what we can do is we can uh, make another little, subtle, very small change um, that will just help improve that um, uh, that little illusion as well. Um, 
And if we go back down to our uh, paint object in the snowflake. Yeah, let me kill this because it's lagging so much it's making me uncomfortable. Um, I don't know why it was lagging, but whatever. Yes. So in the paint, if we add alpha uh, mm. equals increment factor, because the, the increment factor is between 0.4 and 0.8, we're going to uh, just change the alpha. So what this means is uh, snowflakes that are falling faster are going to be more solid than ones that are falling s mm. slower. So it will kind of uh, slightly reinforce uh, reinforce that depth illusion that you, you'll just see the ones closer a bit more solidly than those further away. Uh, so, again, a one-line change, and you start layering up these things, and there you can see just by making that one change, you do see a bit more depth in there with uh, the faster-falling ones are whiter than the, the uh, ones further away. Noise. So, you know, one line changes where you you begin to layer up different effects uh, is where you, uh, what really makes animations appear more natural. By you know, simple animations, yeah, fine. But when you start layering them together, you get really uh, uh, good stuff happening. Uh, Shall we make them? <laughs> <laughs> wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> so yeah, now now we can add the uh, uh, some sideways movement as well because, as we said, um, uh, wind. Yeah, wind. Um, <laughs> what uh, is love? <laughs> but, so, but actually, I like I like Maya's idea now. Well, I want to do that. We have something in reserve if... Uh, I doubt uh, we're going to make it in time because we yeah. have half an hour. Yeah. That's going to take way more than half an hour to do. <laughs> Maybe we can have another stream sometime. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, we, we, we can. Uh, it's not quite shaking the phone, but it, it's kind of uh, using the accelerometer. And as you you angle the phone, the, the snow still falls downwards and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, yes. I don't think we're going to get to it today. Yeah. Uh, so let's yeah, do let, the wind. Let's, let's do let's, the wind. Let, let's add some swirly swellies. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of things we need to to do here. We basically um, at the moment we're just uh, adding something to the Y position. Yes. Um, and what we want to do is maybe add an X component as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to usually not going to fall as much uh, uh move as much in the x direction as the y direction um so what we want to do is think of each uh snowflake as having a vector so a vector is both uh, a magnitude and a direction so the magnitude is currently um what we're uh, moving the uh the delta y in but if we uh apply an angle as well uh, then we can get a small amount of uh, x movement as well so what we want to do is create uh, an angle range so this is a range of angles uh, off the vertical that we actually want to uh, consider um, and in some testing uh, i found that uh, plus 25 to minus 25 degrees uh, from the vertical was uh, quite pleasing. Uh, it gave a nice effect, but it didn't, it never uh, had too much lateral movement. It had a little bit, but still the primary, primary direction is downwards. Okay, so I guess we also need an angle uh, property on the snowflakes. Yes, but we want it to be a mutual state so right oh, like, like the this. position we want it to be a mutual state because the angle c can change as it's falling you'll get different uh, uh currents and stuff like that um yeah 
And so uh, we'll need to create uh, an angle, uh, an initial angle there as a random factor. Why aren't we using the float random anymore? It's gray out. We're going to use it now. Don't worry. Hmm. So uh, initial, that's going to be from the angle range. We want a random. Okay. Uh, what did you call the angle range? Uh, angle range? Yes. But I need to pass it as a parameter as well to this function. Okay. I have angle range, uh, but this is angry for whatever reason. You've got angle wrangle. Angle wrangle. <laughs> 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 oh man, my typos are the best. Um, okay, so we have the random angle in the range, correct? Yep. Um, and we need to do a couple of things here. Um, in the uh, update method, yep. um, let's first uh, change delta y, uh, rename that because it's not going to be just a delta y. Let, mm -hmm. Let's just uh, change it to increment. Okay. And so now we need to uh, calculate the delta y and delta x based on the angle and the increment. So the increment is the magnitude and the angle is going to be the vector. So it's going to be uh, for the delta y, it's going to be increment times the sine of angle. Sorry, I moved the focus to. to the wrong place by mistake. Okay. And delta x is going to be the, the same thing, but it's going to be the cosine of angle. So if you kind of think of a, a square where the angle is the hypotenuse, uh, the x value is going to be calculated and the y value based on that angle and the the magnitude uh, so that is going to cause uh, a degree of lateral movement so we want to apply the sine x uh, uh, sorry the delta y and delta x to the position yeah so just adding them here and here and then after we've done this we want to uh angle uh, alter the angle so you're not just getting something it not not otherwise it will just fall diagonally so we want to change right. the angles so uh we want to uh here angle uh plus equal and angle st seed range uh, i think we need to pass that down then angle yep. range uh we need it here and we also want an angle divisor um which is just going to be an amount that we uh, we alter things by. Um, okay. Um, that wants to be a pretty high number, say something like a, a ten thousand. So. Uh, it's going to be, uh, yeah, uh, angle seed range random. I need to move the random out because yeah. it's here and we'll need to move this one out as well, I reckon. Okay. Uh, multiplied by the angle divider. Um, and now we need to declare uh, my uh, uh, the the. Uh, well, we might not need this after all. Yeah, we might not. Okay. So we need to pass those here now. Yeah. So we have angle range is angle range. 
Jungle Range. Yeah. So no, let's angle, say angle. this is uh, uh, angle is fine. Angle range, and then we need the angle divider uh, or angle factor. No, as as divider, um, which is going to be something we pass in, I guess. Yeah. Angle divider. Uh, it's going to be angle divider, which is a float. And just add it here. And let's make it 10,000. OK. Uh, and can we just I have, have a look at the uh, update method again briefly? Uh, sure, just one second. So you want the update, there you go. Uh, it should be divided by angle divider uh -huh. rather than multiplied by. I mean, otherwise you can just have that as a factor, just yeah. like the density or something. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's give this a try. There is still a bug in there, uh, which might become apparent if we leave it running for a little while. Um, I like bugs. <laughs> as you might have noticed over time oh there's a small Whoa. bug yeah that's very wrong uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, either either that or there's a lot of wind yeah and it's a uh, blizzard we can we can even easily sell it as a feature uh, so that's right yeah what have I fucked up? Um, how's the Delta X? Because the, the weird thing was that the, the Delta Y was always zero. Right? So... Yeah. The, ang the angles being passed in is wrong, I think. Uh, yeah. This one? Like the the one that is the initial angle. Uh, there is a suggestion in the chat. Uh, delta x and delta y is wrong. Sinus and cosinus need to be inverted. Uh, I don't think so. Because if you think of the circle and the quadrant. The cosinus is this, and the sinus is this, so it's correct. Um, Do we? Yeah, know? I, I think maybe look at angle range. If we got made a mistake in angle seed range, I think I fucked up something. Yay! But now we've got things going upwards as well. It's fine. Oops. That's um, a lot of wind. Yeah, there's a lot of wind. They're going everywhere, just mostly off of the screen. <laughs> so, yeah, th this is the bug that I, I said that we... we uh, you do see the number of snowflakes thin out. Um, um, what's happening when you start adding this lateral movement, we haven't got any tests in there to detect things g disappearing off the side of the screen and they can just keep going uh and even though they may eventually hit the bottom they're now reset to the top mm -hmm. uh, but still well off uh off the screen um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but also th there's something very wrong in there uh with we shouldn't have them uh floating upwards if we've got uh angles of between uh, plus and minus 25 degrees from vertical, then that movement should never go up. So for some reason, uh, we've got something weird going on with the, the delta Y. Uh, so uh, yeah, we can uh, fix for the going off the side of the, uh, the screen. So if uh, position dot X is less than uh, minus radius. size. Radius, we call it radius. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, or uh, position X is greater than uh, canvas width plus radius. Right. 
then we want to uh, create a new offset with x is uh, a random position canvas size width dot random so we want to pull it back to somewhere within the horizontal bounds of the canvas but then we also want to move it to the top we don't want to yep. it to just uh, uh, so that we want to minus uh, minus radius yeah uh, um, yeah whatever uh, so you might want to just do it yeah to float there okay let's see still it's better going but up. there's still stuff floating upwards yep and the ones that float upwards we're not detecting uh so they are just floating upwards forever yay <laughs> so we need to try to the, and work out to the moon on there. to the moon yeah <laughs> um do we have some problem with the uh, so the, the thing that is wrong is that the delta y can also be going up i think we need to restrict the angle or or at least have the delta y as like course at least one something like this would fix it because the the cosinus and the sinus go from minus one to plus one so i think for some values of the angle that that is always negative for whatever reason i don't know so i mean we have a f positive feedback about the uh, going upward uh, but uh, the thing that I that I don't know because I I can't um, have a like a confirmed idea from my point of view is it still lagging or it's my stream? Uh, it's kind of lagging, but it depends. Like sometimes okay. it lags, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it tends to lag more over time, uh, and that might be. I mean, we're not we're not allocating much, so I. Wouldn't imagine that that's related to it, but it does uh, lag a bit sometimes. Can you try it on a real device? I can. I will turn on the pixel. So while that turns on, we can try and figure out. So now it works, but the problem is that this is not a real fix. So what we need to do is, I think, when we create the angle mm -hmm. we need to actually coerce the angle to a quadrant because uh, at least for what concerns the the y uh value like it's fine for x to go back and forth but the y must always be at the bottom so what changes is only the amount that it goes down not the amount that it goes up right we don't want snow to ever go Thank you for the follow. I mean, technically, it can. If you get a, a, a gust of wind, it can take it upwards. Yeah. But we don't need that for this uh, simulation. So what we can do is the angle. We need to coerce it to something. Um, Could we just make it an absolute value? Uh, I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, because, uh, well, no, we cannot. Because the for positive, uh, for like angles that go from 0 to 180, or from 0 to um, to pi, then the, the sinus is going up. So yeah. we wanted to go from minus to 0, like minus pi to 0. Yeah, Maya's just saying, just add to the, the entirety of... Uh, like this? Delta Y. Uh, yeah. I mean, that would also work, I guess. Yeah. Let's try that.
there was a there was a comment by the tracks about um, going up. I don't know if you confirmed it. Yeah, but that that's because if they start going up, once they hit the top of the screen, we don't have any check there to recycle as we do when they hit mm. either the, so, the sides or the bottom of the screen. So they're, they're lost and they're, they never come back. So all the others get recycled to start from the top, falling downwards. Um, some of those may go upwards, but you never see them. So because they're already positioned off the top of the screen. So you mm -hmm. would probably see just over time you get diminishing numbers. Um, yeah, fewer and fewer. And then I have to the slow stops. physical device and I was trying. Oh, yeah, I need to put it in. Do not disturb. Open visor. Uh, I can close the emulator because it's not necessary anymore. Da -da -da. Fit. More fit. Um, move it to the side. Yeah, well, nice try, Windows. Um, can I resize and restore the because it's maximized? Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Cool. So now I can launch it on the device. It's fairly smooth on the device, even though it kind of lags a bit on screen. But it's flawless on the device. Is it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Can you adjust the uh, frame rate of visor? Because sometimes that does weird stuff. Let me Can you? see. You've got uh, image quality and... Yeah, but there isn't frame rate. I think it's just like... There's a bit rate. It's already high, so I guess that's it. Max. Anyway, that's fine. The only thing I'm not very happy with is that there's way too much variance on how uh, much the snow falls now. Yeah, there's something seems wrong with the uh, the angles. Are you sure we're not supposed to pass radiance? Radiance. Uh, yes, we are, and we're giving them in degrees, so we need to divide these angles. Ah. That's what the angle divisor is doing, I think. But the initial angle is, uh, is wrong. Okay, so just... Uh... Uh, I think, yeah, what we need to do... Where... So where we create the the, the angle, um, mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah, this is what it is. Um, so we need to. Uh, I'm using. Uh, I've got angle seed as well as angle range. And angle seed is twenty five. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. And that's, yeah, just going to be 25. And so angle range is minus angle seed to angle seed. Uh, yeah, there. Okay. And in here, we want angle seed dot random. I need to pass that in one second. This is where we need the float. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, well, not a huge deal. We can create it in a second. Okay. Uh, yeah, so random seed rang, uh, random divided by angle seed. Okay, so multiplied, as a multiplied as a by, factor. Yeah, multiplied by angle range uh, plus. Do, well, we get a random value from no, the just range. Just angle range is fine there. 
Uh, you're scaling the range. Are you sure that works? Uh, plus. I don't think that works, but we tried. Uh, well, I've got working code here, so <laughs> it, it does, it does need work from. Parenthesis? No, it doesn't. It doesn't there. Um, so after the plus. Yep. Uh, in parens, pi divided by two. And that wants to be minus angle range. Let's just check that angle range. Ah, uh, no, uh, angle range is something different to uh, what uh. you have. So I have angle seed range and angle C, uh, angle range. Uh, I'm not using. Uh, so angle seed range is the actual range, right? So it's yeah. this thing here. You'll have to explain to me what these things mean because I'm not <laughs> sure at this point. Right. So angle seed range. Uh, maybe we can call rather than angle range, call that angle variance. This one? Yeah. Okay. And that wants to be, uh, ba, 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 let me find my constant, uh, 0 0.1. One second. So, point one f perfect. And I need to pass all the things here. Yep. And I, angle seed range, angle variance, angle divider and density. Yes, I haven't had... I haven't added the rest yet. So now we need to we're gonna have to figure out this thing again because all the names have changed. Yeah. But so in the angle uh, definition that wants to be angle divider rather than angle range. Uh, sorry, sorry, angle variance. That we... wants to be angle variance, yeah. Okay. And here as well? Yep. And angle range wants to be angle seed range. This one. Yeah. So what's angle complaining about? And this takes angle seed range. Yeah. And I need to come on studio. Angle seed range dot random perfect. This is load and uh, found double. I think this is yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so you might not need to do the abs on there now because yeah. this should limit the uh because we had a huge, like 25 yeah. is a lot. Yeah, of radians. So that was just completely random directions. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just what's going on? Why is this doing something entirely different from what it's on the device? <laughs> I swear, magic. The device is working fine. I don't know what what this is showing. <laughs> what visor? Yeah, like visor is looping some footage. I I have no idea. Uh, it it looks fairly different. Here. Yeah, I have no idea what was going on, but it looks fine. Yeah, that looks much more like I expect it to look. So yep. you're getting a little bit of lateral movement, but not much. But enough to, to just keep things interesting. You're seeing flakes move at different angles. Um, and you've got the depth illusion by the alpha and the different uh, rates. Um, but primarily, every snowflake is falling downwards. Um, 
So, yeah, it was all down to the fact that we were working in uh, degrees rather than radians. Yeah. And, and was, uh, scrolling up the chat, I s I've actually seen someone pointing that out. Yeah. So we should have been better at following. Oh, thank Whoa. you for the gifts. Thank you. That's wow. very generous. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank wow. You. Wow, that was unexpected. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> was it them suggesting the, the Radiance thing as well? Yes, yeah. they were. Okay, well, double thank you then. Super thank you. Uh, okay, I'm just going to reach out and send you sneakers. So I'm adding yes, you please. as a friend. I'm sending you as a friend on uh, on here on Twitch. Please accept uh, the request and I'm going to reach out to ask for your home address and you are getting a bunch of stickers oh no the turkey's like, uh, here oh no the turkey's here <laughs> what? what the hell is that <laughs> mark that's not how you stuff turkeys <laughs> oh i've been God, called what worse the hell is that? <laughs> than stuffing <laughs> no that's it's turkey. creepy <laughs> that's that's uncanny so uh, we have snow. We have snow. We do. Great. So should we? Should we? Should we? Should we? Uh, just um, maybe move this stuff away and put it in the root of the main, um, main composable. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. And oh, make it fucking are... snow. Whoop whoop. Make it snow. Make it snow. So I'm just gonna uh, post last time the giveaway. So if you want stickers, just type the word. And we are gonna just raffle them in a moment. So so now we have a modifier that we can apply to whatever we want, right? Yes, exactly. And you are gonna apply to the team <laughs> uh oh no wait no that needs to be internal uh yeah that's fine i think that's fine we don't need this anymore good i was thinking maybe one thing uh that we could do is that we don't really need to um to do this right because exposing the snowflakes as part of this state is probably not yeah, the but... right thing to do or maybe it's just everything else is not the right thing to <laughs> to expose like this could be parameters of the uh, modifier itself yeah so let's maybe do that and make this private. And we can do everything else is going to go in there. Yeah, and I'm gonna fix it on worry state. We're 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 still friends. Uh well I'll, yeah. I am gonna do this. Da -da 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 -da. Rudolph the snowfall, he is here. Please don't content match my voice. <laughs> okay, uh, that's fine. And I think everything here needs to go into the snowfall state uh, where we have pretty much everything. <laughs> Size, range, yeah, 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 everything. Just dump everything in there. That's okay. Uh, probably want to make it slightly less horrendous at some point also this still needs the divider and the density okay good i think large yeah i think we might and have to for some refactoring definitely yeah uh i mean i think it's all right this is internal stuff anyway it's probably fine uh -uh. and you need all of this in any case so anyway the only thing i would do uh no that's fine i mean if it just fails when you create it it's okay 
Um, yes, that doesn't need to be internal anymore. Okay, and now we effectively only have the Rudolph modifier here. Okay, let's make it snow. Uh, I've also created let's this uh, function, which is, is wintry Easter egg enabled. So in nice. December, between 21st and 31st, it will make it snow. Um, obviously, I want to test it first without the if, and then we're going to add mm -hmm. the, the thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, add it. Yeah. So why? where do we put it? I mean, does this take a modifier? This takes a modifier. Fuck yeah. YOLO. YOLO. Yes. Told you on the team. Where is it? Like a scaffold? Wait, wait, what did you get? Uh, the upper level. This is the bottom sheet layout, whatever thing. Uh, whatever. It's the the, the wrapper that wraps everything. I mean, otherwise you could have just wrapped everything in a box. That's fine. Um, yeah. Modifier dot Rudolph. Uh, Boom. I love the. It's, uh, do we need? Do we have defaults? Yeah, we just can yeah. type Rudolph, right? Yeah, Rudolph is okay. enough. It looks good. Looks good. Uh, with a bunch of visor is doing the same thing again, where it's showing something else than what's on screen. Because uh, yeah, I I don't know what's going on with. I guess visor. I wonder if it's just got a full buffer and it's just showing the buffer as fast as it can. <laughs> I have uh, no idea. And That's is lagging idea. big time behind the device. No, but look. It's essentially near time, like real time. I don't know. Oh, look at those snowflakes falling all together. What the nice. fuck? <laughs> I think it, it happened because the size changed or something. Not sure. But it's like a, like a bunch of snow and then it gets. Yeah, that's a bug. Why is it allowing me to? The first, Go the first further. batch is is, but then it kind of settles. Yeah, it's spreading out because they're all falling at different rates. Uh, so yeah. over time, it's going to spread out. But that initial uh, rush from the top is weird. Yeah, yeah. The, the the initial one is more like a like a movie kind of thing, right? When they start pouring snow on a set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe maybe we can check if the. Um, the size like is the too small. Like if it's like less than ten, just don't do anything. Pretend that everything is fine. It's like I don't know. Yeah. Like here on on size change, um, you only call resize once the snowflakes like once the the size is bigger than. Why not? Whatever. Just put some logging in there just to see what size size is being given each time that's called sure i mean it just then refreshed it see, and it was fine but then we can see what it gets first time and we can then put some defensive code to prevent that from I have no idea what happened. I am going to... Well, it worked fine that time. Yeah, I'm going to close it and reopen it. No, that's still fine. I'm going to kill you it. You need to kill it. And reopen it. It's still fine. I have no fucking clue what happened there. <laughs> that was good. That's I don't know. Way. I that's honestly don't know. But that's fine. It's one of the few things you've managed to break, Seb. I had to break something. I mean... I broke visor, yeah. apparently, but <laughs> in a way that I don't really understand. It's not like it gets stuck. It's playing it from a different universe. I don't know. I do not know. Anyway, this is fine. 
I don't think it's the log yeah. Maya, honestly. I think it's just, I don't even, I don't know. But the thing is, like, you see, when, when you change something here and it does the live refresh, the live edit of literals, when you do that, it recreates the composable and the snow is there. Like, it's in a different place because obviously it doesn't remember it, but it, well, no, actually, no, it's in the same place because it's the same size, but it, it works. It's fine. I don't know. These things are too complicated for someone like me. I mean, sinus and cosinus. I mean, can we just stop? That's hardcore maths, just right there. I, mean, <laughs> I, I gave up. I gave up at the, on that stuff like fifteen years ago at university. <laughs> uh, I want to check if I have a a, a, a a pen. If yes, that's what we need. And then it was oh, nice. Uh, is winter easter egg enabled uh and then you need to do i guess it's a lambda this yeah, yeah. Well, this is actually cool so if i restart it now then there's it's not gonna, gonna be gonna any work, snow right? because it's not the 21st oh, no, of 21st December. you first yeah. say 21st but that's okay. why i put 21st so it would ah okay it, it's the equivalent of a red test right uh, so, you will be happy to hear that it's fine here, like there's no snow. On your phone. But visor is fine. But visor is still showing something. I mean, I'm gonna... Yeah, uh, I'm, catches I'm up eventually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm clipping this, so eventually we can send an email to the visor developers. And, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm, this I'm is happening on sort the of screen. suspecting that it might be because deploying the app uses up all the USB bandwidth. Maybe. Okay. I don't know, but it shouldn't. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, with your with your hypothesis, if you run it on Wi-Fi, that shouldn't happen. Yeah, but that's what I'm doing now. So now it's running on the ah, Wi-Fi. I see. Let's like see. Okay. You need to... Is it cold, right? If you play yeah. The cold. Minus one, dude. Minus one is serious. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting way higher temperature here. So if I do 11, yeah, it works. You see? When so live edit what? works, it's magical. The problem is it doesn't always work, but I think they fixed the most annoying thing, which was that if you had any code errors, it would crash the app. It was like, no, 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 oh, let yeah, me do remember. it now. That was, that was, that was, yeah, that, that was, was quite bad. annoying because you're like, oh, I'm just typing something. Nope, the app is gone. And you're, you're thinking, <laughs> did the app crash or was it live edit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to do the so, um, giveaway? I think we are at the yes, point where that, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Now that we have uh, a few people in the chat again, uh, I will advise you to take uh, 30 seconds to join the live giveaway. In the meantime, I'm going to run the IntelliJ giveaways. So let give me a second. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. Roll, roll, roll. Roll and roll and Okay, so the first... The first IntelliJ license goes to um, Kyril, Kyril, sorry for misreading your name, pronunciation is hard. And the second one is, ba -ba -ba -ba. bit of cross-checking, cross-checking. Give me a second. Give me a second. Yeah, because this thing is, I need to check against the subscriptions and things. So you need to give me a moment. Um, it's uh, no. fine. It's fine. What I was yeah. thinking is, I am going to enable this and I want to. I uh, give access to things. Yes, thank you. Oh, wait, did it actually... Why did it reset there every time? I don't know. 
Okay. Oh, look, it did it again. Go figure what's going on. Ah, uh, where is it? I don't know. Do I don't care right now, to be honest. It? It's fine. It looks good. We're all set. Yeah, I just wanted to, because that, like, that's kind of a problem with the white snowflakes. Mark, you change your hat again. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not got used to this <laughs> dynamic by now? I have, I have, I have. So, oh, you man. Should, you should know already, Seb, that I have more hats than are uh, then uh, really sense. very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I need to. Pick another winner. This is getting this is getting cumbersome. Yeah, we definitely need the Yay! Oli, I, I did it. First try. So the <laughs> second winner is uh Giuseppe. Giuseppe, congratulations. You get the second uh IntelliJ license. And now for the giveaway of the stickers. Hang in there. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, Atul. Congratulations for getting the stickers. And I need I need automation for this. I need better automations <laughs> for this. this yes, you do. Yeah, but we are, I mean, luckily we are writing the software for this. So this is going to be just temporary. Bear yeah. with us. And I'm just going to put this here. And thank you for your patience and thank you for uh, playing with us. So the stickers are the usual stickers plus the fancy stickers plus all the stickers from JetBrains and Kotlin. And we also have a present that they finally finally came in um so for everybody there are there is waiting for the delivery be patient um delivery are coming we have the uh present you can use it as a i don't want to spoil it so you find out how you want to use it but you will find something uh extra in the envelope so thank you thank you thank you <laughs> um anything else Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm taking the liberty to uh, run another giveaway. So if you are running, if you are watching this on YouTube, uh, you can join the IntelliJ giveaway on this VOD. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, you're supposed to be watching the VOD. Um, so we comment with Happy New Year. And in January, when we come back, we are going to ruffle um, another IntelliJ license. And so, fingers crossed, just um, just stick with us. Anything else? I'm coloring the snow, not yellow. You're coloring the <laughs> snow. Before Mark comes up with those, yellow snow. Well, that was a Frank Zappa song, Don't Eat the Yellow Snow. Yeah, true. Also, <laughs> there was also uh, in um, The Witcher 3, there was one of the suggestions on the loading screens. Uh, when the wild frost comes, don't eat the yellow snow. And it took me like a slight moment to understand why, why would I? Oh, yeah, no, okay, sorry. Yeah, so it was. And that's why you don't. Yeah, there was a sound, sound advice. Um, <laughs> anyway. Are you ready to see weird color snow? Yeah, I have no it. idea what color I picked because it's inverse surface is going to look weird. <laughs> By the way, uh, yeah, it's doing the thing again. Oh, God, what the fuck did I do? Um, it did the thing again. So something, something is happening with Pfizer where at some point it just drops frames and it will eventually catch up. It's fine. We'll figure out. Yeah, no, it's more like uh hellish snow at this point you'll see it soon um but i think it's time to wrap this up because it's two hour 15 minutes wow 
Well, I had a lot of fun. I uh, managed to exhaust the battery of my sweater, which is not a phrase you hear every day. Uh, and uh, I mean, I, I now that I know how to make composable, uh, well, animated modifiers, wink, wink, Chris, we're going to have more of that. Yes. So yeah, that's yeah. what I'm like. It's, you know, silent heel kind of ash snow thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was that's that's a bit creepy. But I also like Maya's idea of confetti snow. That that's actually cute. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, you can just pick a random yeah. color for the snowflakes. I think you can do different shapes, right? Now, now we are doing dots, but yeah. we could do like you know squares or things. You like can that technically right? get like a bunch of snowflake drobles and have them oh. come down and maybe turn around you there's no point in putting a rotation here given that the that there are circles so you won't see them rotate as they fall but if you had drobles that look different then uh it would make sense um but yeah i think we are done i will not commit this shit because it's really bad um <laughs> the dark one no, because I just picked uh, inverse surface because if, if it's like white on white, you don't really see it. But at the same time, no, I don't care. It's okay. I think it's fine. The only thing it could do, but then if you have drobles, then you don't have the problem of colors. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think we're done for the year. Wow. Nice. Uh, so... I just want when to take a second to, to thank everyone. Seriously, this has been crazy. I've had a lot of fun. Yeah. And, um, you know, sometimes it's a corny thing to say that the real good thing is the friends you make along the way. And it is very corny. But at the same time, I think we've, like, we've created some sort of a community that uh, is not something that you see all the time. And um, I feel very... Uh, lucky that we're able to do this. I feel very lucky that we have wonderful people such as Mark that help us both financially paying for the expenses we have, which mostly means uh, you should thank Mark for the stickers you get, uh, but also... Yes, <laughs> pretty <laughs> uh, much. Uh, uh, but also we have uh, people, again, such as Mark, uh, that come here and teach us how to do things. And that's uh, great. And that's like the whole reason why even myself are doing this is because we want to learn and we want you folks yeah. to learn with us. Uh, and we, I mean, we could technically explain you things as well, but I'm sure that give Ooh. like left to Ooh. our own devices, things would end up like they did with, <laughs> with UI tests where it takes us quite some time to get there. <laughs> we get there, yeah. but it takes time. So um, yeah, yeah. thank you, everyone. Um, like, seriously, uh, this is great. It's one of the best things that 2021 brought to me. And I'm very, very glad that uh, you're sticking around and you're staying with us and you're having fun as well, hopefully, because that's kind of the whole point. We're not here to study. We're not here to toil. I mean, we're here to swear because I break shit, but uh, we're also yeah, here no, to have, I mean, like, yes. we're primarily here to have fun. So that's uh, what I, we do, right? I mean, I, you can't do our job without swearing. So that's no. a precondition. Yes. Please, Mark, sorry. I interrupted uh, you. I think it's also worth um, giving some thanks to Adam Powell, who uh, yes. uh, helped out um, when we got Thank stuck you, Adam. this stuff working. So thanks, Adam. It's much appreciated. Yes. Very much. Yeah, there's also, let's not forget the people that help us behind the scenes that you don't get to see. But yeah. like when we are trying to do something that we don't really have much experience with, we are lucky enough that we have people that we can ask for help and they've always helped us. Uh, so thank you very much, Adam. This is not the first time that Adam helps us. <laughs> so more than one thank you, I guess. Ivan, anything else? Yes. I 
No, I just I'm just very grateful for what we are building. It started as a, oh, let's try to run com to learn compose and uh, humiliate ourselves live on Twitch. Uh, but and that it turned out in an incredible experience. We have a lot of friends in the chat all the time. We have a, a telegram uh, a telegram group where we actually uh, chat even when we are offline and yeah, we have supporters and we have supporters with hats, a lot of hats. And if you if you want to support us, there are plenty. I, I don't I don't want to give away the whole uh, again, the whole list. We have plenty of opportunities, Twitch, uh, coffee. Just check out the, the website, even just watching the VODs on YouTube. It helps. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And when are we coming back, Sebastiano? We're back Do on we the have a date? 5th of January. And we are, As, if I'm not mistaken, it should be a design uh, episode. I don't know if it's going to be the one on Figma, like how to use Figma, which I'm very much waiting for because I don't really understand how yeah. Figma works. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Or if it's uh, the one about, like we have a bunch of others planned, but I, th I think it's, maybe going to be the one about how to use Figma. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be something else. I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll obviously let everyone know as we get closer to the date uh, on Twitter, on Telegram, on Coffee, on the Discord, everything. I'm done. Mark, thank you again <laughs> for being with us. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mark, once again. Uh, thank Always you a to pleasure all our guests that we've had so far and all the ones that we'll have in the future. Um, and with this, happy holidays, everyone. Enjoy some time off. I hope uh, you're going to have yeah, a great time with your families. It. Tell me about it. <laughs> ciao, ciao.